All right, we got to start by addressing the elefante in the room, and that is that both Peru and Chile claim the pisco sour as their national drink. And while, like most drinks, the history is a bit muddy, all research I've done points to Peru as the origin, so we're going to go with that. Today we're going to be doing a taste test of a couple Peruvian piscos, talk about the different varietals, and then we'll make the pisco sour. So Peruvian pisco is a clear brandy made from 100% grapes. You can think of it as a distilled wine. Now the first type of pisco we're going to talk about is called pisco puro, which is a single varietal pisco. Now there are eight different grape varietals that are allowed in Peruvian pisco production, four of which are classified as aromatic grape varietals, including this Moscatel, there's also Torontel, Italia, Albia, I think I'm pronouncing that all correct. And being an aromatic varietal, you do get a lot of nose on this one. I immediately get some grape, a little bit of orange. Uh, the taste is very sweet up front. Um, it's a bit floral as well. It's really nice. And next we're gonna try another pisco puro from one of the four non-aromatic grape varietals. So this is a quebranta, there's also uvina, mojar, negra criolla. If I'm pronouncing that right, my Peruvians, y'all gotta help me out here. Now let's try this quebranta. Now right away I can tell there is less aroma on the nose here, maybe some banana notes. But um, when I try it, it is a little more smooth, but I would say it is very similar to moscatel. The reality is in a sour cocktail, you would not be able to tell the difference. Now the other type of pisco we're gonna try here is a pisco acholado, which is made from more than one varietal. It can be a blend of grapes or a blend of piscos. Now this brand does not disclose the recipe they use here, but right away I can tell this one's my favorite to sip on. It just has a lot more funk, a lot more character. There's sort of a richer grape flavor to it. It's really nice. I think I found my sipping pisco to pair with my ceviche, but let's get to the pisco sour. This drink is a pretty standard sour template. Not a lot of surprise here. We're gonna go with the Muscatel Pisco for this one, and then we're gonna balance that with some simple syrup and some lime juice. And just like the whiskey sour, we're gonna use an egg white here and use a little aromatic bitters to tamper that wet dog smell. We're gonna start with 3 fourths of an ounce, or about 22 mils of our simple syrup into our shaker glass. Then another 3 fourths of an ounce, or 22 mils of fresh lime juice and then two ounces or 60 mils of our Pisco. Now this is optional, but if you wanna brighten this up a bit, throw a pinch of salt or a couple drops of saline solution in there. Now whenever egg whites are involved, I always like to do the reverse dry shake method, which starts by shaking the cocktail with ice for about 15 seconds. This is gonna chill and dilute the cocktail, and once that's done, we're actually gonna double strain out all the citrus pulp and ice chips back into the shaker glass. Next here, you're gonna watch me awkwardly try to extract one egg white from a large egg here and do it over the tin so if you mess up, you don't have to kill the whole cocktail. Now we're gonna finish by dry shaking without ice for about another 15 seconds or so. Now supposedly this drink was invented by a guy named Vic Morris in the early 20th century, but to be honest, I'm not super interested in the history of this drink. It's a basic sour template swapping out the spirit for Pisco. But if you are interested in the muddied history, the channel Distinguished Spirits does a really good breakdown. I'll put a link below. All right, when we're done with the dry shake, just grab yourself a chilled rocks glass and free pour the cocktail right in. The reverse dry shake method is gonna yield an amazing amount of foam here. And once that settles, I like to add about eight drops of Angostura bitters here. And if you wanna get fancy, put it in a little pattern, maybe grab a cocktail pick and swirl that guy around here. In addition to flexing your artistic talent, the Ango on top actually will mask some of that wet dog smell you typically get with egg white. All right, let's try the damn thing. Here we got the Pisco Sour. Right away it passes the wet dog sniff test and this is really, really nice. You really do get a hint of that grape coming through here and it plays so well with the lemon. Pisco just works really well in this sour spec. It goes down incredibly smooth and that egg white gives it that great body definitely worthy of national drink status. Thanks for watching guys, and as I mentioned last time, the Cocktail Chemistry branded denim aprons are now available at Search and Rescue Denim. I love these guys, everything they make is super high quality, and a lot of y'all have been asking for this, so we finally made it happen. I'll put a link below.